Another thing to consider when you are creating lettering in Design Shop is the justification of those words, as well as the horizontal and vertical stitch order. So let's take a look at some of those. When I have multiple lines of lettering in Design Shop, I can right click and go to Properties, and then I can change how they're justified. And this works just like a lot of the word processors or email programs that are out there. I can justify everything to the left and have the rag on the right. I can justify everything to the center and have the rag on the sides. Or I can justify everything to the right and have the rag on the left. This is a purely aesthetic decision. It's completely up to you and your design as to what you want to do and, and how you want to do it. Now, the other um, stitch order buttons that we have on there, that is less of an aesthetic decision and that is more in how I want things to sew out. So when I am dealing with embroidery, I don't really want to have an anchor point and then sew towards it. If I, if I anchor something down and then I sew towards it, I'm going to push a ripple of material or I most likely am going to push a ripple of material and that's going to get sewn in. If my, if my garment has a lot of structure, that, that ripple can actually cause needle deflection and cause needle breaking or thread breaking. So what I would prefer to do is anchor something and sew away from it. That way, if I push a ripple of material, it's going to be pushed away from my design um, towards the, the rest of the garment where it's not going to do any harm. You might also consider an anchor point in a garment as well. So if I had uh, an anchor point in a garment like a seam or the bill of a cap, that is something that I would also want to sew away from. So let's take a look at this design. If I was sewing on, let's say, a cap, I might have, let's do that again. I might have a cap here. This might be going, and this is my center seam. Now that center seam is going to act as an anchor. So I definitely want to sew away from that. So I want to sew away from my center seam. I also want to sew away from the bill. So when I'm dealing with a cap, I've got an anchor point with the center seam, and I have an anchor point with that bill. I want to sew away from both of those. So let me get back out of this tool. And let's look at how to do that. With my horizontal stitch order, I can choose to sew from left to right, and that's the default mostly because that's how many of us read. I can choose to sew from right to left, or I can choose to sew from the center out. So if I was doing this for that cap, I would definitely choose center out. I also have the option of changing my horizontal, or pardon me, my vertical stitch order. I can sew from the top down. I can sew from the bottom up. So if I was sewing a cap, I would want to sew away from that bottom uh, bill. So I would turn that on, and now I'm sewing from the center out and from the bottom up, and this is going to sew much better uh, on a cap. It's going to push material away from that center seam. Any ripples going to go to the sides of the cap where it's not going to do any harm. I'm going to push away from that bill so that I'm not causing myself needle deflection and thread breaks. So this is set up for a cap and should sew out fairly well for me. The last one over here is meant more for um, legacy machines that don't have trimmers. And what that does is it basically serpentines back and forth, does each line in a different direction, and it puts any of the non-trimmed threads on the edge. So it would sew from left to right on one, then from right to left on the other, and it's going to put those non-trimmed threads on the edge. If I look at how I would use this in a design that is not for a cap, let's take a look at a design like this. Let me close this for a minute. So this is a floral shop that we've got kind of set up. We have the name of the company sewing in this kind of gold color, and then we sew everything else over on the right-hand side. So the name is sewing first. It doesn't matter what direction it sews because nothing else has been anchored. If I were to change the order of this, so right now this gold is sewing both first and last. For efficiency's sake, I could remove a thread change, which would save me some time if I sew the name of the company last. Since the last color of the flower and the name of the company are sewing in the same color, I can merge those two. And now I only have 
nine color changes instead of 10, and that's going to save me time on the machine. However, if I were to sew this out right now, it is going to sew all of the flowers, and then it's going to sew the name right towards that flower, and that might push a ripple of material right here in the middle. To avoid that, what I could do is change the order in which it sews. If I change this so that it sews from right to left, I can now sew the lettering after the details on the branching. It'll sew all at once and have only nine color changes in it. And if I watch it sew out on screen, it's going to push away from things that have sewn before. So I'm always looking to push material away from things that I have anchored. It's not always possible. Ways to minimize that is to use good underlay, good backing, prevent that ripple from happening. But if I'm sewing the lettering from left to right away from what I've sewn before, I'm always going to push that material um, to a place where it's not going to do any harm. So horizontal and vertical stitch order are definitely things that you need to consider when you're considering which way am I pushing that material. And then justification is a completely aesthetic choice and it just depends on your design. So you've got a lot of tools for setting up your lettering so that you can avoid thread breaks and material push, as well as make your lettering align to your design.